Also, Travis Jensen has his food truck set up selling barbecue items between building one and two and the country kitchen. And the Harrison Kettle Corn trailer is set up just to the north of building number two. You can see the orange trailer out there. Also in building number two and in building number five and the swappy area near the entrance to the showgrounds, there are numerous vendors selling art, other collectibles, toy tractors, antique tools, handmade goods, and a whole host of other items as you make your way engine moving. Rex Weissoppel has the Buffalo Roller in cruise control right now. He's down off the engine, observing the very slow movement. And Riley Neff on the 2070 Nichols and there went the Nichols and Shepard. Looks like the 16 Nichols and Shepard is still in the race. And perhaps the two-cylinder Rumley, owned by Norm Hayes, is being operated this year by Philip Atwater. That's the engine out there with the red bunkers on the back. Looks like Gerald's 65 horsepower case won the single cylinder division. And I think the Rumley is probably, yep, the Rumley won the two cylinder division. All right, new winners today. Looks like we have another Nichols and Shepard on the far east side. So that makes one, two, three, four. Looks like we have 14 engine out, engines out there for these races. So a real good turnout. All right, we'll get the new This will be slow race number two. Everybody ready? It's always interesting to see what tactics to the finish line. As we mentioned already, they don't always have the best reaction time off the line. Sometimes there is subterfuge. I wouldn't be surprised to see Randy Payton jump off his engine and try to put a roadblock or a wheel chalk in the way. But it's all in good fun. The full side, <laughs> as mentioned, there's Randy with his tomfoolery. Oh, he, he got it. That's, that's the first edition of the Buffalo Roller Pyramid Stunt going over that triangular log.
Also, the 75 horsepower case is still chugging along. The full size 1648 Russell. We just lost the one third scale model of the 65 horsepower case. Single cylinder new Huber is in a good position. And then in the two cylinder division, 70 nipples and chef. And it looks like the two cylinder Rumley is also still in the two cylinder division. Mm, this is going to be close between the Russell and the new Huber. Good showing here between Bob Gallo on the new Huber. And I think that's just creeping ahead, Andrew. I think the single cylinder win is going to Bob Gallo on the return flu new Huber. And it, it looks, looks like, like Riley, Riley Neff is dialed in for the second slow race on the 27th. We'll get you single cylinder guys backed up. Good try. does win the second slow race in the two-cylinder division. All right, we'll get him backed up. We'll do one fast race, and then we will take our midday break. Any of these engines leave the ground, they are automatically disqualified. Okay, here's our fast race. Everybody ready? And go! Engines are very hot, but I'm sure that if the engineer says it's okay, you can probably pull the whistle. Maybe take the steering wheel, but I wouldn't touch anything else. It's about 10 till 12, and we're about to take our midday break. Again, there are several options competitors in the tractor rodeo. Right now they are competing in the tire drag, which is a modified barrel racing event. Derek 
Derek Schumann on his Farball Super Z. Manufactured as part of the Gibson I and H lines. From the beginning of the company in 1946 until this. The next tractor coming through is a Minneapolis Moline Jetstar. Most of these trackers were built to run on liquid propane, but this particular Jetstar 3 is running on diesel. That's Curtis Holsky from Bluedell, Kansas, up there on the 1966 Minneapolis Moline Jetstar 3 diesel.